All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to Introduction to Drupal. Uh, my name is David Needham. I'm a themer and trainer for Chapter 3. Um, before we get started, uh, let me just do a quick like hand survey of the room. Uh, how many people in here have used Drupal before? OK, so most people. Um, how many people are, are taking this, this uh, session in order to like train it to someone else or to explain it better to to another person. Okay, um, and then how many people in here are just um, just trying to kind of get a better understanding of what Drupal can do just out of the box? Great, excellent. You're in the right place. Um, so let's get started. Um, so I mentioned Chapter Three. Uh, well, who is Chapter Three? We are uh, a company out of San Francisco, California. Uh, about 30 people or so, um, and I started working for Chapter 3 uh, almost a year ago, uh, immediately following DrupalCon San Francisco. Um, I was hired as a themer and trainer, so that means I, I make websites look pretty, and I, I travel around to conferences like this and give talks and uh, little training sessions too. Yeah? Uh, just to let you know, your buddy Steve Brewer is uh, at the other UW campus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, we, we met up with him last night. Perfect example. So we have uh, many different clients uh, in many different industries, uh, including like technology and academic. Many universities like GW. Uh, we also do a lot of like big websites, you know, including like uh, the Examiner for San Francisco and Washington, um, and then also many different like nonprofits like uh, the UN, uh, the Fair Trade, and uh, like the Electronic Frontier Foundation. So I use the word themer. Um, if, if you're not really familiar with this uh, like Drupal uh, uh, ecosystem, then you may not know exactly what a themer is, per se. Well, essentially, I take designs from the designers at Chapter 3 or um, designs from other people, you know, our clients who uh, have made either Photoshop or um, Fireworks or whatever files. I take those designs. I add a little bit of code. Um, I, I use the code that Drupal uses and kind of override it and tweak it. And using magic, I make a website that looks uh, pretty close to the designs. I understand this doesn't look exactly like that, but give me a break. Um, so who uses Drupal? Um, besides the examples of you know, our clients that we've, we've had over the years, um, here are a few big ones. Uh, who in here was, was part of the keynote? Like you, you heard that about the White House? Yeah, that was a really good presentation. Um, I've been hearing about this a lot uh, with the White House ever since they launched a few years ago. Um, and it's been a really great use case of what exactly you can do with Drupal, especially in government. Um, there are many other websites, including like really big ones, really small ones. Um, Drupal is pretty flexible in exactly what you can use it for. So what exactly is Drupal? Where did Drupal come from? Who made it? Why? Et cetera. Well, this is the creator of Drupal. Uh, his name is Dries Biotart. He is from Belgium. And he was in school working on his doctorate in 2000. Uh, he and some friends on campus needed a way to uh, communicate, give each other like status updates, to plan events, essentially Facebook. Uh, this was way before Facebook, so they made Drupal like, out of the box, just from scratch, uh, in order to give them similar to Facebook uh, functionality. It sort of evolved over the years and kept growing, like more people came on and they shared it with, with uh, the internet. Um, and he was trying to figure out exactly what to call it. Well, in Belgium, uh, the word for small village is dorp. So he's like, okay, well, let me just go and I'll register the domain name dorp.org. So he goes in there, he starts to type dorp and makes a typo, accidentally types drop. Org, and it's available. And so he's like, well, you know, drop.org, I can't pass that up. So he buys drop.org and starts putting out Drupal under that. Well, in Belgium, um, or in Dutch, uh, drop is uh, Drupal, like Drupal. Um, it's spelled kind of differently. Um, but whenever it got really huge, no one in America, no one in like any English speaking countries could pronounce it exactly correctly. Um, so we ended up renaming it to Drupal as we have it today. 
Okay, so what exactly is Drupal? Well, Drupal is a content management system. Um, it's open source. It's many different things. Let me just go through a few of them. Hey, Drupal is free. Uh, as you might have heard in the, the keynote, uh, Drupal itself is free. You know, you can go to Drupal right now, you can download it, it's completely free, you download it, put it on your server, play with it all you want, and you have nothing to worry about. Uh, down the road, if you need, you know, developers, if you need, you know, expert advice, then that's where some, some of the cost comes in. Uh, but overall, even compared to other content management systems, compared to other trainings, to other conferences, overall, Drupal is significantly cheaper than, than many others. Also, Drupal is modular. Uh, using Drupal, I mean, you start out just right out of the box, you install Drupal, and it has some core functionality. It can do a lot of stuff just right then. Uh, but there's many, ex many features that you need to add on uh, to like, get very specific uh, use cases. So for example, you start out with Drupal and it's like, oh yeah, I can build a blog and a contact form, and it's working great for me. But then, what if you need to add a photo gallery? What if you need to um, make an RSS feed uh, for something very specific? Well, that's when you need to go to Drupal.org, again, all free modules. You can go on there and look through the thousands of results of different modules, download them, put them on your website, configure them, um, and then just go to town adding in functionality step by step. Drupal is also themable. So you might start with one, one Drupal website, you know, you install it out of the box, you look at it, and it's okay, but it isn't exactly what your company or your organization uh, is going for. Well, you can go to Drupal.org again, uh, download a theme, check it out, and with just a click, your website looks totally different. Uh, additionally, you know, there's other websites like Top Notch Themes and a few others where you can buy like premium themes, which work really well. Um, pretty much all that we do at Chapter 3 is building them from scratch. And for many use cases, you may want them built from scratch. Um, many websites, many companies and organizations have uh, very specific needs that oftentimes a, a contributed theme may not provide for you. Okay, and Drupal is open source. Uh, so open source, that's it's kind of a, a big, a big like unknown phrase um, that it, it kind of scares people to be honest. You know, you, you you hear about something, especially in government, and you think open source. That means everyone can look at the code. That means you know there's no support. That means you know all these different. Um, different aspects of it that are, are generally seen in a negative light. Well, t you know, truth be told, open source is actually significantly better than a closed process or a closed uh, like code base. Uh, for example, by just having everyone be able to look at the code, by having everyone be able to contribute back and um, add in their own notes, add in their opinion, mm -hmm. uh, it really makes Drupal flexible. Uh, it's made it uh, a very wide range of, of use cases uh, has allowed people to um, do just about anything they want with Drupal because it's been open source. So anyone can look at it, anyone can add uh, anything in there that they need to to make it work exactly how they want it to. And Drupal is community. Uh, you guys are here right now because well, we're all sort of part of this community. Uh, and I'll talk about this a little bit more later. Um, but in general, but community is a huge part of Drupal. Um, community involves giving back. It's that whole, like, you know, how it started out as small village in Drupal. Well, Drupal has always been about the, the ecosystem or the community. Uh, people take care of other people in the community. Uh, we do everything we can, including giving these talks, you know, free of charge, um, just to try to help people and try to get them going in Drupal. All right, Drupal is secure. Uh, another problem that many people have with open source is, again, you can look at uh, the code, so you think, oh, well, I can't have my, my government website running Drupal because if anyone can look at the code, that means anyone can go in, they can hack stuff, they can you know, break into it, find flaws. Um, but the truth is, because there are so many people looking at Drupal, looking at the code, looking at um, exactly what makes it tick, that means that there are thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that are saying, hey, I found this little flaw, I found this little bug, or hey, I broke into this website, and then they tell people about it on Drupal.org, it gets fixed, and there's no problem. So um, 
I would say you know, like routinely every week, every you know, every so often, uh, there's a a security team in Drupal that will review modules, review Drupal core. It'll go through all these security concerns that people have, anything that someone's reported, and they'll they'll do their best job to like uh, like restrict exactly what can happen from that point. So you know if they need to take the module temporarily offline, or if they need to um, just you know stop people from from uh, getting to that, they can announce you know to everyone say, hey, here's an update to this new this new module. Uh, there's a security flaw. Please download the newest version, and then you'll be safe. So uh, through this iterative process and this community um, collaboration, we're able to keep Drupal much more secure than it would be if it was some uh, closed off project. All right, Drupal is accessible. Uh, it's another huge concern for government as well as academic um, organizations. Uh, Drupal has to be accessible. Uh, there has to be, you know, 508 compliance. There has to be um, just all these different restrictions or uh, um, features that have to be built in there in order for people who are using screen readers or people that are using, um, you know, some other systems that, you know, maybe they, they can't use a keyboard, maybe they can't use a mouse. Uh, Drupal has tons and tons of support for this. There's many modules that help uh, improve the system so that uh, just about anyone can use the website. Um, there's also many groups out there, many uh, talks. I, there's at least one talk here at Capital Camp today about different ways that you can help improve the accessibility of your website. All right, Drupal is self-aware. Um, obviously not in the Terminator sense. Um, one of the great things about Drupal that you don't get with many other content management systems is that parts of Drupal are aware of other parts of Drupal. So it's, it becomes really easy to create relationships between different pieces of data um, and different uh, ways that people interact on your website. So for example, um, some content management systems that you use, you might download it, you can get it all set up and it's good to go, and you can make blog entries. And you can see like a widget that has a list of recent blog entries. Okay, well then you want to add news articles or, or something like that. And so then you add another module or another plugin that will give you that functionality. So then you can have blogs in the widget, and then you can have news articles in a widget. Uh, but then what if you want to have um, another widget that shows blog posts that have been written about news articles? You want to kind of tie those together and see how they're related? Um, in order to do that with, with many of the other systems, you'd have to probably hire um, some developer or um, see, you know, try to find a professional to come in and uh, get that working for you that way. With Drupal, however, there's a great module called Views that lets you build any sort of um, any sort of connection, any list, any <coughs> query um, that will show these different things, um, different relationships side by side. So it becomes really easy using the graphical interface to build uh, all these different widgets out of the box. So you don't need to write code as much. All right, so why should you care? Uh, why should you care that Drupal's open source? Uh, what do you care that you know, uh, Drupal's aware of itself? You know, different things like that. Well, there's actually many different benefits to using Drupal, some of which I've talked about. Let's go on to some more. All right, time. You're going to save tons of time using Drupal. Uh, you might have a, a huge website, and you only have a deadline of six weeks. Well, in Drupal, it's actually really, really easy to build a complicated, huge website in six weeks. Um, you know, asterisk, disclaimer. It, it does vary, of course, based on exactly what's going on in your website, what sort of designs are going on. But for most client websites that we do, the first month, the first like big chunk of time in, our, in, in the whole process doesn't even involve Drupal at all. It's that planning stage where you know, you're going over exactly what you want in the website, exactly what the design should look like. Um, and then when it comes to actually building the website, you know, it, it really doesn't take a lot of time at all. Um, also, once you have a website there built, uh, it's very easy to create those relationships between them, and it's really easy to add additional features. Uh, once the structure's in place, if it was built in the correct way, it becomes really easy to just add another view, add another content type, um, and just keep going from that point on. So 
if you need to, to add something else, you don't have to start from scratch. Um, and also, if, if the site is built in a, in a good way, uh, like if the themer did their job right, then the administrative backend should be really clear and concise. So you shouldn't be wasting a lot of time hunting around for, for buttons or hunting around to figure out exactly what you need to do on your website. Um, also, of course, time, uh, by saving time, you save money. So again, back to money. There's no licensing fees, of course. Uh, you could go to a, a Drupal contractor, and you're not going to have to pay a price up front for just to get Drupal. Um, also, all the modules and themes that we talked about are all completely free. Uh, training, um, I mean, we do trainings uh, like all over the country through Chapter 3. And there are many different companies here today that, that do trainings. Uh, we just had trainings going on the past couple days. And compared to other content management systems, compared to other tech industries, um, to receive a full day of training, you know, you're talking about like several hundred dollars, at least, you know, I mean, possibly, you know, over a thousand dollars or more. Um, and with Drupal, most of the time, you know, it's like, it's, it's much cheaper than it would be if it was those other situations. Um, also, the, the cons, the, the camps, the, the group meetings like we are here today, um, you know, it's super inexpensive compared to uh, a big con like, you know, Macworld or um, some other con like that. Um, so what that means is that by, by coming to these cons also, you get the benefit of, you know, rubbing shoulders with the people that are involved, again, in the community. Uh, you get to talk to them firsthand. You get to come to these sessions, you know, for free and learn a little bit more about Drupal from experts who um, you otherwise would just not really know. Uh, and the developers in Drupal, um, they're not always the cheapest. You know, Drupal developers are in high demand, and so that means often that their, their price is a little high. Um, but because it is Drupal, because uh, those professionals are experienced and they've been in it for a while, uh, it's really worth the investment. Uh, Drupal developers over time uh, will you know, just build a website that gives you all these different functions. So uh, it's worth the investment. Uh, so Drupal support, um, if you visit the drupal.org website, uh, which I'll be doing in a few minutes, uh, we'll see that there are, are so many different ways that you can get support. Uh, there is like chat IRC if you want instant support, where you can go on there. Um, I'm pretty much always on IRC in the, the Drupal channels, Drupal support channels, uh, if anyone needs support for that. Uh, there's also a forum on drupal.org where you can go and post. Uh, if you're having any problem, if, you're, if you get an error on your website, you know, if anything doesn't really make sense, you can usually Google it, you can usually go to Drupal.org, um, and it will show you a list of all the other people who have had that problem or a similar problem, and almost always there's someone who's replied with some sort of an answer to that problem. Uh, there are also issue queues. So every module and every theme that's given out on Drupal.org has an issue queue where people can go and either request help, report bugs, um, you know, make suggestions for things that um, can be improved about it so that the, the people who are writing and contributing to these modules and themes uh, get instant feedback from people who are using those modules and themes. Uh, it also means that you get feedback both from the contributor and other people who are using that uh, so that it, it's constantly improving that way. Uh, there are also support contracts. Um, one thing that was a little bit scary to you know, bigger companies and government and education was that once they get a Drupal website, um, you know, because it's not a, a you know, for money, because you don't have to pay the licensing fee, it's not closed off, uh, there's often this um, belief that, oh, well, that means I can't get support. You know, what happens if my site breaks? Who do I call you know, to demand that they get it back up? You know, who do I call when something doesn't work? Um, and, it's, it's actually becoming really popular right now, and like we offer some support at Chapter 3. Uh, there's Acquia, which does support. Yes? Well, I, I work with the US Civil Support. Mm -hmm. What we have is, um, I used to actually work for the software in the uh, United States. The customers had the problem. They, they send a database to me, a directory, and this directory gets a post it to me to fix that first problem. Is that something? Mm -hmm. 
that's not something that our company would do. And the, just to repeat it, the question was, um, with Drupal support, would we uh, like be able to take the database and file structure and then try to replicate the problem so that we could troubleshoot it that way? Uh, that's not something that our company does. Um, most of the time, most of our support contracts are involved with like our, our clients, you know, people that we have direct access to the server for. Um, and then there are other companies like Acquia who uh, provides support in other ways. So many of theirs are also like hosted internally, but they do do support, you know, um, through other ways. I'm not I'm not sure if they do that way specifically. I wouldn't be surprised. No, I haven't. Yeah, typically, typically. So again, uh, back to the community where we are today. Um, because Drupal is used by so many different people in so many different countries, using you know different uh, technology uh, with different situations you know that they're going for, um, it means that Drupal is incredibly flexible, incredibly extendable. Um, there is huge localiza localization. Uh, that means Drupal is available in many different languages. Like right out of the box, you can go to Drupal.org, download a language pack that you could install on Drupal, and then Drupal would speak your language. Uh, there's also really awesome uh, modules that you can add in there to translate your content into many different languages. So uh, if you wanted your site to be bilingual, trilingual, whatever, um, there are some great modules you could add in that would let you compare side by side, translate your content, you know, your blog posts, your articles, compare them, translate them, and then display them to whomever would want it in whatever language they prefer. Uh, also, I mentioned Drupal takes care of their own. Uh, in the Drupal community, uh, really, like what your reputation is, uh, what you've done in the past, is a, usually a pretty good representation of um, like how much help you'll receive. So, for example, uh, if you often hang out in the IRC chat rooms, uh, if you are often like trying to help people however you can, if, if you're seen around at the, the local uh, Drupal user groups helping people and stuff, other people are more likely to help you. Now, that's not to say that, that they won't help new people, you know, people that are just starting out, but if they know that you're giving back, they know that you're doing what you can to kind of help others, then you're more likely to get help yourself. And I, that can be true for any community, really. Also, there are many different ways you can connect to the community. I mean, there is just Drupal.org where you can go and be part of it that way. There's also Drupal user groups. Uh, I don't know specifically what the one here in DC is, but I know there are several uh, in like different regions of like DC and the area. Um, and Drupal user groups are basically just people getting together to talk about Drupal. Um, people, you know, just like you here. People like professionals and people that are just playing with it and freelancers and. All sorts of people just go there to chat with other people about Drupal. Uh, occasionally, there will be uh, like presentations and formal trainings and, and things like this, um, just to kind of help out the community. There are also many different camps and cons. So this is a camp. Um, there are camps happening all over the country. Typically, I'd say about one every other week. Um, there is a regional camp in the US. Uh, there's probably at least one a week, if you consider the entire world, where all the different camps are happening. Uh, and then there are cons. Uh, officially, there are two cons that happen in Drupal. There's a US con that happens usually in March or April. And then there's a European con, although it might be a just like world con in general, that happens in August. Uh, so if you are able to go to one of those cons, there's tons more people. Um, and it's just generally a, a really good way to uh, meet a lot of the people that are involved with the community. Uh, there are also birds of a feather um, things, and I, I, I'm not sure if there are any here today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Great. Yeah, birds of a feathers um, are great. It's kind of a weird name. Uh, but essentially, it's, it's ways to connect people that have similar interests. So if you see a, a birds of a feather room available, if you, you, know, you see some sort of a talk in a birds of a feather group, uh, it's basically you just go there, and typically anyone can speak up, anyone can say, Oh yeah, I uh, I've done this with 508 compliance. I know exactly how to get around your problem, and so they, you know, they just talk and share and kind of contribute to the group that way. Um, and so again, just like 
because when I first started out with Drupal, I received a lot of help. I, you know, people came and helped me, and they kind of like, you know, put their arm around my shoulder and like guided me through learning Drupal. Uh, they guided me through like making my first module, guided me through like, you know, building my first theme. And so because I was helped so much, I feel like I should help others too. So that's one of the reasons I'm here today. That's one of the reasons why I love just like doing trainings, mm -hmm. doing these sessions, just being able to mm -hmm. kind of uh, pay it forward or, you know, whatever the phrase is for them. All right, so what exactly can Drupal do? Um, well, a better question might actually be what Drupal can't do, but um, Drupal is incredibly flexible. You know, if you have something, some sort of feature that you want on your website, it's probably been, been done in Drupal already. Uh, you can probably Google whatever it is that you want to build, and it's probably been done, and if not, then there's probably um, ways that you can get help with that. So like, you know, news, blogs, articles, photos, galleries, video, uh, surveys, forums, like all these different ways, all these different types of websites you can do, including e-commerce, which would be incredibly difficult to build without Drupal. Uh, but the question is, is Drupal for you? Um, you know, Drupal, honestly, may not be perfect for every situation. Uh, if you are just looking for a standalone blog, or a standalone forum, or a standalone wiki where you really don't need integration, you really don't need to mess with, like, modules and themes, you just need something very simple, then, you know, there's like uh, Blogger and there's WordPress. Excellent blogging tools if that's all you need. Uh, and there's also great forums and great wikis also. And in those situations, you know, those might be just, you know, they might be great for you and then you don't have to worry about Drupal at all. All right, so let's demonstrate Drupal now. Um, most of you have already said that you you are familiar like you have used Drupal in the past, um, but I'm just going to run through several of the uh, different things that you can do with Drupal. All right, so this is a brand new Drupal 7 website. Um, it's straight out of the box. Um, the only thing I added was this uh, a module for administration menu. Um, so I mentioned modules. You can check out the modules page from the top here. And you can see all of the modules that come with Drupal. Uh, when you install a module on your website, you put it in the file structure, and then it shows up on this list. You know, Drupal scans through there. It looks through in the modules directory, like cites all modules. Um, and it looks through there, and it finds anything that it's, it's, um, that's presenting itself as a module. Um, so many of these are the core modules, the ones that come with Drupal right out of the box. You, know, you don't have to install anything extra. And then there are some other ones, like the administration menu that I enabled. You just stick it in the folder, you, it shows up here, you go here, you, you check the box, you save the page, and then instantly it appears at the top. It's that easy. You don't have to do code for this, you don't have to do anything like really hard for that. Yes? When you get a, uh, when you get to Drupal, you get a report? Yes. Yeah, when you, when you go to Drupal.org and you download just Drupal, the only thing that you see is the core section. Those are the only modules that you get with that. And then when you're ready to extend stuff, like adding in the administration menu, uh, you just have to go download the, the module. Um, or in Drupal 7, something new is this link to install new module, where you can, all you have to do is put in the URL, and it'll actually install the module for you. OK, another thing about Drupal that's uh, really key are the content types. So uh, in Drupal out of the box, there are two content types. There's just a basic page and an article. Um, these can be uh, modified if you need to, or you can add additional content types. Uh, a good way to think about it is if you need to add a new, um, a new way of working with your data, a new feature, um, something just new that you're going to be doing with it, you probably want to add a new content type. Uh, a content type is, is just a way of storing information about something. So, for example, um, there's an article, which might be a blog post, might be a news article, something like that. Um, we can compare these two very simply and just see that a basic page only has a title and body. So it's like you know an about page. You add a title, about, and then you add in some text, which is just about our website. 
compared to an article which has the title, which we have um, on the page, the body, which we have on the page, tags. So any um, categorization, any like information about this um, particular news article, you can put those in there. And then an image. So if you need to add additional fields to any content type, um, you can do that from here too. So any sort of uh, text, image, files, numbers, whatever. And then you can extend this with other modules too that will let you add in stuff like addresses, videos, etc. All right, and uh, when you design a theme, yes, uh, you create the content type as well. Uh, yeah, so the question was, when I design a theme, I, do I make the content types as well? Well, the the process usually involving like. Uh, as far as like creating the theme, is that most of the website is built first, and then we come on with, with the theming, because it's really hard to design for things when it doesn't already exist on the website. So it, it's fairly common to start with the theme to kind of get like the background and the colors and the general stuff done. But then as far as uh, like content types and, and views and lists and you know all those things, we have to wait until later before we can theme those. So you can uh, target those content types. Exactly, yeah, those are targetable after, after you make them. All right, so I also mentioned blocks. Uh, in Drupal, there are these things called blocks, which are just like little snippets of information. Um, let me jump actually back. There's this nav menu here, which is a block, and this search box here, with this, which is a block. Uh, if I look at the blocks page, I can see that out of the box, there are, are tons of these different blocks you can put in. You can also create your own block just from scratch that you could you know, put in any sort of information there. Yes? I think like, I think just like snippets of HTML. Uh, snippets of code, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? Do you think it's wise uh, to uh, think more of uh, seeing the content with uh, blocks or uh, what about people generally use more of the panel based views? It's an excellent question. And, and basically, the, the question was. Is it wise to use blocks or should we use panels? Uh, well, at chapter three, there's we, we use panels for almost every website we build, uh, and panel. and panels are are just a different way of it's some, very similar to blocks, but it gives you more functionality. Um, let me finish explaining blocks before I explain panels. It's okay. Um, so there are all these different little blocks, these different like snippets of code that you can put on your website, and then there are regions based on the theme. There are all these different regions that you can actually put the blocks into. And so it's fairly common as a themer to have to like go into the code and like modify exactly where the regions show up on the page. Like I mean I might need to add a region, you know, here, or I might need to take one out. I don't want a sidebar, so I'll take that one out. And maybe you know I don't need quite so many down here, so I'll take them out or add them somewhere else. Um, so this is blocks. Uh, it's it's really simple. It's been with Drupal for a long time. Blocks work pretty well. Um, panels, on the other hand, um, is it seems like it might be the future. Um, I really don't want to get into it a whole lot, but it, it gives you this this layout system, um, sort of on the fly. Like you can you can move regions around. You can find different layouts and change like on a per page basis what regions appear. Uh, you can also do lots of things like per you know per block change how it's cached or how it's, um, um, like, who can see it. So panels is pretty cool. If you're interested, there are other sessions about panels where they get in a lot more depth. I don't really have time to do that now. Yeah? Um, just to clarify, uh, if you are creating a theme and you don't want that rigid thing to be um, replicated on every single page, so you have certain pages that are going to be in different mm -hmm. um, Are those, is, there, is that modified in this, in this theme? Yes and no. Uh, the question was, if what if you need different pages of your website to have different themes? Yeah. Uh, yes and no. Uh, you, it is possible to account for different pages in a theme and say, on this page, I want it to look different. Um, or there are modules where you can say, on this page, use this theme. On that page, use a different theme. Uh, okay. And I, I can talk to you more about that afterwards if, if you want. Okay. Um, and the last thing we're going to talk about, just real quickly, we're out of time already, um, is 
just really uh, themes. So currently we're using Bartik theme. It's really simple. Uh, it's really quickly. Uh, I can jump to a different theme. This is another one that came with Drupal out of the box. It's what Drupal seven or Drupal six was in. It's called Garland. I'm just going to enable that one and close the page. And let me go back to the home page. And you'll see that the website looks different. So um, the the different links are in different places. It has you know just different um, different elements in this page. So it's really quickly. It's really easy to quickly jump from one theme to the other in Drupal. Um, theming is what I do, and so it's my passion, and I enjoy it a lot. So. Um, I could talk all day about it. And I have a session at 4 o'clock if anyone wants to, to talk in more depth about theming. Um, but that's all I have. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll stick around for a few minutes afterwards. But thank you.